going to be pretty cool to see in action because I don't think we have seen it yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at least the ones we have casted, we have not seen that secret box just yet. I think Zach Lesage was playing it in his list yesterday on the stream. But yeah, we're kicking off our Swiss round 13. Both of these players, like I said, the top of their game from uh, each of their regions, culminating here at NAIC for our Swiss round 13. It's going to be a great one to see. And Stefan Ivanov is starting off this uh, first game between our players. Fluttermane once again in the active position, like we've seen many times <laughs> uh, here throughout this tournament. And a Ralts. But was it two mulligans total here for Stefan to start things yep, off? It was two okay. mulligans total. That's definitely not something you want to do against the uh, very fast and very furious uh, ancient box yep. deck. And yeah, Stefan being thorough with his price checking, gonna lead with the Arizona. The Arizona Andrew's gonna be very happy about as well to exactly, be able to establish yes. those roaring moons. So it's really gonna be a tough mountain to climb here for Stefan. Yeah, it's unfortunate that some of your cards do play into your opponent's strategy as well. <laughs> like that Artisan, I mean, that's huge. Uh, basic Pokemon that does not have a rule box, it's so essential for your setup as the Gardevoir player to get these Ralts out onto the field, just as Stefan is doing right now in this matchup. But it is going to greatly help Drew Kennett. And <laughs> Andrew Kennett already had some help with those extra cards from the Mulligans. And I feel like this is going to be a huge turn here for Drew Kennett because uh, Ancient Box has a lot of cards that tend to help it out as long as you don't have too many late game <laughs> cards going on. But what am I seeing? Is that a research of the entire yeah. hand, Pablo? Professor, Those are all late game cards. I mean, it's just there was no way to I get mean, uh, Roaring yeah. Moon. There's no energies. And you wow. want those ancient cards in the discard pile. The brand new Walking Wake. It's exactly. only here basically to act as an ancient card that has a one retreat cost. <laughs> and can add to your <laughs> oh um, damage. This so, is so crazy. I think it's completely fine. Like, no, Andrew must is. be very happy with that research. That's a lot of cards out of the way. You get seven fresh new ones. And Professor's Research is one of the new inclusions in this ancient box deck. Usually they don't play, uh, or they used to not play research. They just relied on Explorer's Guidance and the normal knockouts yeah. and Ultra Balls to get those ancient cards there. But I like that inclusion to just uh, be able to control a bit more how yeah. many cards you discard yourself. Exactly. No, no, that was a completely fine play there for Drew Kennett. Not fine for Stefan, seeing all of those ancient cards hit the discard pile now uh, in, a, in a matchup where you're already the slower paced deck uh, and you're facing off with these dark Pokemon as well. I mean, this is just uh, a tough a matchup already and it has already been tougher here from so far what we've seen. So Drew kind of needs to be stacking up these ancient cards. The ancient mechanic uh, now, it's obviously the opposite of our future mechanic. It has a couple of different cards that play a little differently for our ancient Pokemon, but that vengeance fletching on the Roaring Moon uh, is going to be what is going to be taking these knockouts here for Drew Kennett. It has a 70 base damage, and then it's 10 additional damage for each ancient card that goes into your, uh, that is in your discard pile. So that is the strategy here for Drew, is to discard these ancient cards and just continuously take back-to-back -back knockouts here and, uh, you know, stabilize that board state. Stefan, on the other hand, what is he going to be doing to face off against this already tough matchup on paper, Pablo? I mean, he's going to try to be as aggressive as possible and try to use Iono a lot to have Andrew whiff. That's basically his uh, game plan now. He did get a pretty solid draw off of this Iono. Did find one of the three Kirillas available. Will be able to technical machine evolution into the others. Found Body Body Puffin. Can still use Artisan. So, Stefan's setup is looking as ideal as it's going to get yeah. when you had that turn one, you have this solid turn two, but when you're staring down these dark Pokemon, you're not a happy camper as a Gardevoir player. I think the biggest thing that happened for Stefan here is that Drew did have to discard a Superod when he played that Professor's Research. That only leaves one Superod left and one Roaring Moon is prized, so maybe there's a world where Andrew actually runs out of Roaring yeah. Moons at some point and is not able to produce another powerful attacker, but that's Stefan's only uh, saving grace at this point in time. And it's going to be a while before he even gets an attack off. Yeah, I mean, we got to talk about the fact that this isn't really a likely matchup, I would say, to even hit 
going into this tournament, I mean, I want to say it was the Ancient Box. I think there's only five of them yeah, in our day there were two. Only five, yeah. yeah, in total. And Drew Kennett, uh, unfortunately for Stefan, is one of those players uh, behind that deck, piloting this deck, and he is a fantastic player here. So if Drew Kennett is playing into a giant field of Gardevoir, he yeah. is going to love yeah. to see that. So we'll see how this plays out here. Let's talk about this Monkey Dory. It is on the bench here now for Stefan, as well as those two Ralts and that Drifloon coming out from that Buddy Buddy Poffin as well. Uh, how do you think this display of the Pokemon that we're seeing uh, kind of plays into the game plan that we're going to see from Stefan? I mean, maybe Monkey Dory somehow to able get enough damage on the board at some point. Uh, where you get an extra prize that way to compensate for the fact that your card of Warrior X will probably go down at some yeah. point if you're Stefan. So that's like a nice thing about the Adrenaline Brain, but it's also three damage counters per turn, right? That's going to mean three turns to potentially knock out this uh, Flutter Brain. That's like the only low price Pokemon yeah. you have here. So, but yeah, as you mentioned, Boo, yeah, Ancient Box, there's very few today. But Ancient Box, I think on paper, has a good matchup against Gardevoir, a good matchup against Lugia, yeah. and a good matchup against Raging Bolt, and a good matchup against Lost Box. Those are four oh of the most popular decks from day one and the most popular decks from day two. So things are looking great for Andrew here. Yeah. Great meta call. Huge meta call there for Drew Kennett. Well, we're going to see those Curlia be evolved into now from Stefan off of that technical machine evolution. You target down those Pokemon, get their stage ones out, and now those Curlia are set up for the next turn as well as the one that was evolved into last turn to be able to refine through this deck. And uh, in concept, you can see why this deck built around consistent here, uh, consistency here for Stefan works so well uh, into other matchups, especially. I mean, look at this. All, all the cards in the world can be drawn off of this board state, and that's exactly what you want to see as a Gardevoir player, is to have this fully established setup. But over here on Drew Cannon's side of the field, we're going to establish ourselves. Concealed Card's going to draw an additional two cards. Huge hand Ooh. stacked up here. That Professor Sato's Vitality getting uh, drawn off of the Concealed Cards on the Radiant Greninja. Yeah, I guess he already had one. I thought, he, oh no, that's a no, great that's tusk it. at the end. So yeah. that Professor Sada will actually allow Andrew to get the first KO. He will be able to power up here, power up here, and will be able to be the aggressor. Will get this first prize card, and that's going to put Stefan in a very tough situation. Yep, not only does that Professor Sada's Vitality allow you to accelerate from the discard pile, these energies, it gives you that pivot that we see from the Flutter Main being able to retreat off. The attachment was already on the Roaring Moon from last turn, so now we get an additional attachment this turn to the Bench Roaring Moon, and we are stacking things up here. Artisan going to be bumped for a Pokey Stop, allowing Drew Kennett to draw into even more cards because that Professor Sonus Vitality also allows you to draw three cards on top of accelerating those energy. And now you can see on the opposite side how this deck functions, how smoothly it works, and your all single prize Pokemon. So, and honestly, it's kind of beefy too. It's 140 HP still yeah. on that basic <laughs> Roaring Moon. So you're an awkward HP to knock out, but you are taking uh, huge knockouts, especially the more you build up that discard pile with ancient cards. And you can see how this deck has made it to this point that Drew Kennett currently is in. We're going to see that first knockout there on a Ralts. One Ralts gone to the discard pile. Siphon going to uh, activate this Curlia into the active position. And we're going to start seeing some refinement happen here. Yeah, and I mean, uh, this is a one matchup where we don't need an ancient counter. <laughs> we basically know that Stefan's Pokemon are just going to go down every single time. Gardevoir EX is weak. Everything else has so little HP. So uh, that was Roaring Moons just need to be powered up, be ready yeah. to attack. And Andrew just unlocked the other Roaring Moon from the prize card. So things are looking fantastic for him. Really grim for Stefan. He can get a knockout this turn, but in the one for one price trade off, he's already behind. And at some point, he's going to need to have the liability of Gardevoir EX that can be boss's orders up to the active spot. So oh, I'm failing to see what Stefan can possibly do here other than try to run Andrew out of energies. That's his only hope yeah. that Andrew whiffs enough Professor Sadas, enough turns 
to where he fails to produce an attacker at any point. Yeah, is there any sort of alternate win condition? You have to kind of look for that as much as possible if you are Stefan. We saw a couple of refinements happen there. One, uh, the last one, drawing into an Iono, as well as a counter catcher. And now we're seeing that nest ball bring out that scream tail. And it's the beautiful artwork one, Pablo, my favorite. <laughs> it is the beautiful illustration rare promo scream tail. Beautiful. And I can see a situation where, or a scenario where you try to go like counter catcher on this two uh, retreat costs, Roaring Moon combined with Iono, Ooh. and then you snipe the energy off of the two energy Roaring Moon, right? That seems to be a decent plan. And you hope to make your opponent whiff, right? That's what Stefan needs to play for. Hope that Andrew fails to attack once or twice to be able to overcome this huge weakness that he has to this deck. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see if that is what's going down here between our players, but we're kind of already going there. But first, we're going to have this Earthen Vessel discarding a card here out of the hand. It's going to be that Klefki being discarded to the Earthen Vessel. We're going to uh, get those Psychic Energy out of the deck here and into hand for Stefan Ivanov. Yep, Stefan's deck looks pretty blinked out, not just that uh, Scream Tail. I feel like Stefan is always there's, blinked out, though, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of... Uh, Price pack promos, holo energies, a lot of really cool things here. But mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to see a couple or an extra refinement. Stefan's attack is pretty well set thanks to that psychic embrace. And it's going to come down to Andrew. What did he draw from those five cards? And can he get an attack going? Oh, ho. well, um, you know, with the accelerated energy here, the attachment for turn is going to be that dark energy going down onto that monkey dory. That is what unlocks that Adrena Brain uh, ability to shift those damage counters from your field onto your opponent. So not only are you healing up your Pokemon, but you're moving them onto your opponent's board state as well. That Screamtail is going to go into the active position here after that retreat of the Curlia. And we're going to see a bunch of damage counters come down onto the field thanks to that Psychic Embrace ability of that Gardevoir EX. This is how this deck functions. All those Psychic Energies go into the discard pile. You retrieve them out with the Psychic Embrace on that Gardevoir EX. And you accelerate to your Pokemon that have a variety of different moves. Screamtail in particular, that Roaring Scream, 20 damage for each damage counter uh, that's on the screen tail and it can go anywhere on your opponent's board. What do you think about that knockout though? Interesting choice by Stefan. Instead of uh, choosing to go after the powered up attacker, he chooses to eliminate the engine of Drew. This deck has to fe focus so much on the ancient cards that yeah. it can only really afford to run Greninja as an engine. But you have to wonder, is it a little too late though? Uh, there's not a lot of energies left available that Drew could have used any ways to power up, and you're not forcing your opponent to have too many cards. I mean, this will help eventually against an Iono. Uh, Drew needed a Professor Sada either way, whether he knocked out the Roaring Moon or not. So interesting choice by Stefan, but there's now going to be two uh, Roaring Moons fully powered, three Roaring Moons fully powered up that Stefan needs to deal with. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, Pablo, this is exactly how I was looking when I uh, was was <laughs> viewing the matchup before watching Drew Kennett play out in the field yesterday. And uh, it's scary. It is very scary, especially when you're the Gardevoir player uh, looking down this board state from yeah. Drew Kennett's side. I mean, it, it doesn't get scarier than this, I think. Now, another key card other than the Super that was discarded on that first yeah. professor's research by Andrew was the boss's orders. There is, I believe, a Palpad to recover it eventually, because that's how, we, that's one way you can get a knockout on this card of RDX. But for now, Andrew doesn't even need to do that. As long as he keeps getting Roaring Moons powered up, he's yeah. going to be completely fine. Well, we're going to see another knockout here for Drew Kennett, going down to just four prize cards left to take in this Swiss round 13, game one between our players. And everything's looking pretty nice here. All these Roaring Moon are ready to go. They're hitting more than enough damage at this point in time to take out these weak Pokemon from Stefan's side. And uh, Stefan, going to start us off here with some more refinement. But I mean, where are we going to see this turn go from here, do you think, Pablo, for Stefan? I mean, you could try to bring up 
the scream tail, I mean, the flutter wings and the flutter mane. Oh yeah. my gosh, <laughs> I'm getting so confused. You you bring up the flutter mane yes. once again with another counter catch or bot. You try to get back the scream tail and try this again. It's defense, number one goal is to make Drew miss eventually. He needs to make something like that happen, but with five energy on the board, it's not looking likely to happen anytime soon. Well, and between these players as well, I mean, this game alone has been going incredibly long. These are single prize card Pokemon yep. outside of that Gardevoir EX that's on the board state. So what do you think about the time and how that's going to play into this matchup, especially if this game concludes now here and we head into our game two? Yeah, I mean, that's also another thing that's going against Stefan. He's already behind in this game one. He might be able to, um, like, he could potentially play this out and then maybe try to win a quick game two, knowing this is a very unfavorable matchup yes. and try to hope for a tie here but this is also something very important as you mentioned boo the time is running out turns are being um like very drawn out they're grindy there is, yeah. yeah they're grindy and i mean monkey dory knocking this out eventually will help stefan make up for a little bit of the deficit that he's currently in so andrew is a little bit pressured to try to eliminate this card of X at some point but yeah it's like, there's a lot of pressure on Stefan clock. right now. Yeah, yeah, a lot of pressure indeed going into this matchup alone. But yeah, progressing through these both of these board states, I mean, we're at least going to see all of these abilities being used here from Stefan, that Monkey Dory to take up that damage there on the Flutter Main. Those, both of those Curlia have already drawn cards there with refinements. And now uh, Nest Ball coming out as the uh, choice from that Arvin as well for the supporter for turn. Yeah. Nestle going to be able to help Stefan next turn as he tries to recover either the Screamtail or the Drifloon, which are his main attackers. The one thing Stefan needs to completely avoid is making sure that that Guard of Oryx does not attack at any point because it'll go down very, very quickly. But see the next knockout prizes tied. Eventually, Stefan will pull ahead with that Screamtail. So Andrew needs to continue to thin, needs to find that Palpat, and needs to eventually chase down the Gardevoir X before Stefan does something like Professor Turo that off the board. Yep, Stefan doing everything in his power here with these attacking Pokemon this time around. That Drifloon, it looks so friendly. It's just a little flying balloon there. <laughs> uh, flying around, 70 HP, it's tiny. I mean, really right now it only has one damage counter left until it's knocked out there. Ooh. But that balloon blast, Ooh. 30 damage for each damage counter on that Pokemon. It hits for so much damage here. What did you see there, Pablo, from, from Drew? That Explorer's Guidance gave Drew so many good cards, but he can only keep two of them. He's going to have to give up yeah. on his A-Spec. Going to have to give up on that Roaring Moon in favor of the last copy of Superrod. And yeah. that Palpat, Palpat, which is so essential to get back the boss's orders. Yeah, those are both two huge recovery cards uh, for Drew Kennett that he cannot lose here. That Palpat to get those supporters out of your discard pile, shuffled back into deck. And that Superrod for both uh, Pokemon and Energy, shuffled back into deck as well. So both of those cards controlling the later turns in this game. Drew Kennett could not lose them, but of course the Explorer's Guidance, you keep two and the rest are discarded there. So it can always be a little risky. Uh, you don't play too many of that card unless you're really trying to turn through your deck and get some cards here. But Roaring Moon, double Roaring Moon, I should say, being shuffled back in as well as one of those dark energy. Yeah, making sure that he has access to enough attackers needs six Roaring Moons basically to close <laughs> this one yes. out. So it makes sense that he's going to put those back. Now, Drew also has access to one copy of Great Tusk, which we could see as a sort of surprise if Stefan ends up being careless with his deck and leaves too few cards there. But yeah, this is a really back and forth. Drew knows that that Palpat was so essential. So that was a very costly Explorer's Guidance. And a late game Iono could actually turn things around for Stefan, and all thanks to the Monkey Dory able to take down this Flutter Rain essentially for free. Yeah, that is pretty brutal here. And just another sentiment as to why Monkey Dory is so good as an addition into these Gardevoir decks. But Drew Kennett going to do everything as far as the strategy goes to get these Roaring Moon set up here on the board, attaching those energies as well. I mean, 
really doing everything in his power. What is he looking for, do you think, uh, as far as to play here or debating here, Pablo? Just the pal pad? Yeah, I mean, he knows the threat of Iono is always present for Gardevoir, so he's debating whether he should True. play it now when he has it or he should be patient and not. He's going to play it now, which I really like. Uh, four cards is still a very decent amount in case you took an Iono, and if you don't, you have the Poke Gear available, you yeah. have the Earth and Vessel to find energy, so still a lot that you can do. Uh, I think chose not to use the Pokestop, um, just takes the KO, which I also like. There's definitely, he didn't want to discard that Roaring one that he just put back into the deck, so Andrew's gonna pull ahead here, but Monkey Dory is applying a lot of pressure. Exactly, that Monkey Dory pulling some weight here. Yeah. And it's doing it for free. It's just on the bench, chilling. It's got a dark energy attached, and it's moving all of those damage counters around. And it plays perfectly into this deck because you're putting your damage counters on your own Pokemon with that Psychic Embrace from the Gardevoir EX as well to both hit a bunch of damage as well to get those extra damage counters onto your opponent. And that really is... The difference here for Stefan uh, in this matchup, I mean, it's huge for yeah. Stefan having this Monkey Dory. Yeah, it's really, Monkey Dory has definitely brought Garvor to a whole new level, as we're going to see Stefan put back his attackers, get out the Drifloon again, just take the knockout Cycling. on the most valuable Pokemon, which is the two energy Roaring Moon. And if you combine this with an Iono 2 3, Drew could actually be in a little bit of trouble. I'm liking as the game goes on because Stefan got that absolute perfect setup and was only behind one yeah. prize card when he started attacking, he's actually in a pretty sweet spot right now. Yeah, that technical machine for Stefan, uh, just setting up that the entire bench impeccably here. Yeah. And that consistency of all of, uh, of these evolutions into the Curlia, the consistent draw there is what has led to this board state now where Stefan is being able to churn through the deck and continuously get these knockouts back and forth and back and forth because look at this hand. It's huge. You have a ton of cards at your disposal to be able to uh, get these strategies for Stefan, and I expect nothing less from a top-tier player like Stefan as well. So Curlia going to get some more cards here, discarding an Arvin into the discard pile off of that um, refinement into another Arvin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The refinement, uh, it's helping Stefan thin the deck, get access to pretty much everything he could possibly yeah. want at any moment. Uh, this might be the turn where you consider using Professor Tour. It could also be the turn where you finally knock out the Flutter main with Adrenabrain, and that way uh, Andrew can't use Counter Catcher as a way to go after the card of REX and is forced to find Buzz's orders later. Yeah. So things are looking really good for Stefan at this point, actually, because he knows that Ancient Box never plays any sort of hand disruption. Yeah, I mean, that's huge for this deck. Just as we saw it help Andrew Gantner in the Lost Zone deck in the last match we featured, it equally helps Gardevoir when you have all the resources in your hand to be able to do this stuff. And not only do you have the resources of the cards, but you have these attackers coming back out thanks to those cards consistently. You're accelerating these energy now and taking those damage counters onto that Drifloon here, allowing it to do incredible, um, an incredible amount of damage um, with that balloon blast. What a move, Pablo. B -b balloon blast, baby, <laughs> on this Drifloon. I mean, it's it's a huge amount of damage. 30 damage for each counter that's on the Drifloon. And then when, when you uh, buff that HP on the Drifloon in other matchups as well, I mean, you can e do even more. So it's a lot from a tiny little basic 70 HP Pokemon. Yeah, Drifloon is definitely a non-expected threat uh, before uh, Bravery <laughs> Charm came out. Yes. Like it was, okay, card, but with Bravery Charm, with Luxury Escape, with Hero Escape, has now become a mainstay and the main attacker for Gardevoir. Gardevoir is good, but Drifloon is the yes. real, real star. MVP. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, I like this. I think this was another supporter that was drawn off of the refinement for yep. this turn. That's going to be the Toro, allowing Safan to pick up that Gardevoir EX and rebench a, a Ralts as well. And it just goes straight to the hands. And now the Ralts is back out. We're going to see that knockout going down an additional prize card here for Stefan in this matchup, tying things up between both of these players. Three prize cards each that we see on the board, as well as that Flutter main uh, with the 80 um, damage on it. Yeah, and this is really looking good for Stefan now because 
Andrew has no way to get ahead in the prizes. The only thing he can do is keep taking knockouts every single exactly. turn, right? Yeah, there is He's a doing universe, everything. <laughs> there is a universe where maybe he could have powered up the uh, the Flutter main to maybe try to go boss KO after, uh, go for a boss double KO to um, against the Drifloon once it's powered up to take a knockout. But that's not going to happen anymore. And Stefan will it's be true, able to actually. get an attack off and knock out that Flutter main with Adrenabrain. And no amount of Professor Sada is going to allow Andrew to take multiple prize cards now. Stefan will need to play Guard of Warrior X down next turn to get another attacker. Yeah. And it's going to come down to can Andrew find either boss's orders or if Stefan goes ahead and knocks out the Flutter main, uh, find Countercatcher to take the last two prizes. Yeah, that's what it's going to come down to here, Pablo, in this match that Professor Sada's vitality accelerating those energy, those dark energy from the discard pile onto those Ooh. ancient Pokemon. Whoa, the ancient booster energy capsule being put onto that Flutter main right at the last moment, Pablo. What do you think about that? That's a fantastic play for Drew. Going to be able to give extra HP to Flutter main. Yeah, plus means, 60 HP. Yeah, that means uh, Monkey Dory will need three more turns to knock out oh that Flutter main at this point in time. And there's also the possibility where Andrew can penny up the Flutter main to prevent and negate all of that damage. So if Andrew's hand sticks, this could be really good. Yeah, Stefan needs to Iono yeah. this turn. Things are getting very close, but Andrew very aware of the Monkey Dory threat and very aware of what he needs to do to counteract it. Yeah, that, that was a huge card there. And Stefan, yeah, eyeing all of that down. I mean, look at this hand as well, Pablo. How many cards do you reckon that is? That is <laughs> at least 12, I gotta imagine. It Three, looks, six. I, yeah, that's a ton of cards. It's more than 12, that. 15. It's 15. a 15 card hand. 15 card hand. And this is why I don't play Gardevoir, Pablo. <laughs> this is like, if I looked at that hand, it would just be way too much for me to be, uh, to, to look at. I mean, but that's the thing with these players that know this deck and the ins and outs of everything. They they see the lines and then they look at the cards that they have in their hand to be able to carry out those lines as far as the optimal solution to any of these pickles that you might end up in uh, as far as your game plans go. So, Stefan, benching these, uh, or evolving these Curlias on the bench here. And we have yet to see uh, several different uh, refinements, just the one on the active position here for Stefan. Yeah, Debating, this, I guess, where to... This ancient booster energy capsule changed everything. Yeah. This now puts Stefan in an awkward situation where he yeah, wants to Iono, know, but he also needs to basically Professor Turo up the card of that he's going to get into play. And if he does that, then Andrew's hand will remain huge, and then he will be able to penny. Uh, Stefan hasn't seen the penny, I don't think, so I don't know if that's going to cross his mind or not, or if he's just going to risk the Iona to a guard of war, hope that Drew doesn't find a boss's orders. Yeah, I, I think you're right here. Temple of Sinnoh coming into play just to bump out that pokey stop that was in play there before. There's no way for Stefan. There's no jamming tower. There's no lost vacuum. No way to deny the ancient booster energy capsule. So we're going to see that get promoted. I think we're going to see the Iono play, risking yeah. the possibility of Andrew finding energy plus boss to win the game. I think you might be right here. That counter catcher, Stefan, is behind in prize cards, activating that card there, bringing up the Flutter main with that ancient booster energy capsule. Uh, helping it out there as far as the HP goes into the active position here for Stefan. Eyeing up that uh, now like 14 card hands here. We're going to see one of those bravery charm uh, come down onto the scream tail on the bench as well. And there we have it, Pablo, the Iono. And Stefan is hoping on hope here for this Iono to work. Andrew Kennett's only going to be able to draw into two cards after both hands of each player uh, is shuffled up, put Oof. to the bottom. Not What'd you a, see, Pablo? Not a great draw for Andrew. A stadium and a roaring moon, I think, in his hand. So no way to retreat that flutter main. And this could be the turning point. But this could be the turn that Stefan yeah. ends up needing for Drew to whiff to turn things around. And especially if he can refine that Professor Tour that is now at the bottom of the deck, that would be huge. 
Oh, we're going to see another refinement here first from Stefan. Throwing is. away that ultra ball. There's wow. A, there's the Professor Turo back into the hand. So Stefan is able to get this essentially free turn. Then he can get another prize card, take the card of our EX off the board and prevent Andrew from winning this game. I definitely counted out Stefan too quickly. Yeah, I, I think we both did here, Pablo, because we're seeing that damage tick up here on the Flutter Main that, from that Monkey Dory. All of these uh, energy accelerated onto this Scream Tail here now for Stefan as well. There's a knockout. Wow, that Roaring Scream allowing oh. Stefan to take that Roaring Moon on the bench out. Andrew just top decks that Professor Sada. That is oh insane. Oh my gosh, we have the top deck of the Professor Sada's vitality. That is huge. To accelerate those energy onto the board here, that's going to be able to uh, give that Flutter Main the ability to retreat now, drawing into three additional cards as well for Drew. That puts the fan in such a bind. Once again, Drew will be able to take a knockout and put himself down to one prize card. The booster capsule preventing the Flutter main Woo. from going down. So I think we're going to see another Iono down to one. And it's going to come down to can Drew draw a Professor Side of Vitality, Earthen Vessel, or an Energy. It's all thanks to that ancient booster energy capsule. That's so, so Huge. key. Yeah, that and I, I mean, I'm glad we used the pal pad as well earlier <laughs> to get those supporters <laughs> back there. Nest ball going into this deck here. This is the entire deck here now for Drew Kennett. Yeah, and ah, I'm surprised he's not choosing to bench that walking wake. He has a single retreat cost just yeah. like this Flutter main, and it's all about finding energy for next turn. You have to know that there's an Iono coming. So any card that is not an energy or is not a way to help you find energies is no longer good Valuable. for your yeah, deck. Exactly. Well, we see that hard retreat from the Flutter main thanks to that Professor Sada's vitality attaching that energy to that ancient Pokemon there. And, of course, the attachment to that Roaring Moon going to be able to take the knockout here. Thankfully for Drew Kennan, he is not going to fall behind on taking these prize cards, but there is one prize card left in his way to take and Stefan Ivanov is what stands in the way of that. But what can Stefan do at this point in time now, Pablo? It's Iono and hope. It's literally Iono, KO, and hope for the best. There's no other play available for Stefan yeah. that will allow him to win this game. Andrew needs to find one energy or one Sada to power up this Roaring Moon to win this game. There's a walking wake in the deck that I really wish it wasn't there. This Flutter <laughs> main is know. now 10 HP away from winning. So. Either Andrew wins next turn or he's going to lose. Yes. Now. Oh! Whoa, look at that. The Turo on the Monkey Door. Is there another Darkness Energy available? That could be the way Stefan wins this game using Monkey Dory twice. Oh my gosh. Wait, you're right. There's your Thin Vessel. That's There's actually it. Oh, this is huge. We're about, we're, uh, wait, so the Monkey Dory was picked up here by that Turo, putting it back into the hand. Earthen Vessel here is going to get the energy that Stefan needs. Attach that dark energy to the Monkey Buddy Buddy Poffin there for Stefan, as well as a couple Explorers Guidance. Did you see anything else in there, Pablo? Yeah, the Roaring Moon, the Professor Sada. So a lot of key cards for Andrew in the prize cards. And the Flutter main mirror match in the active for both <laughs> players. That's pretty funny to yes, see. Yes, exactly. Um, Just different arts. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flutter main on Flutter main action here in our game Ooh. two so far. But look at that. Stefan. Just the Flutter Main being attached to in the active position. Manaphy coming down onto the bench as well. And we're over to Drew Kennett's side. Uh, let's see what this initial hand looks like here for Drew. We're going to see the Earthen Vessel start to get these energy out of the deck. Yeah, it's a Gardevoir player. It's never good news when you didn't bench a single Ralts on yes. your first turn. So, Andrew, that alone will immediately put him essentially ahead. Might allow him to get ahead two prizes before Stefan starts attacking, yeah. which will nullify any sort of Monkey Dory play. But right now, time is against Andrew. He exactly. needs to play as fast as he can. He needs to be as aggressive as he can and start taking those prizes because you know Stefan is going to, if he recognizes that this is a losing situation, he's going to try and make it. So Andrew has to go through six different Pokemon yes. and will not get a Gardevoir EX into play at all. 
Exactly. It's perfectly put there, Pablo. Drew Kenna is going to have to play quick here, start to do these actions fluently for this turn, and we've been flying through it so far. These energy hitting that discard pile is what we need to see for them to be accelerated by Professor Sada's vitality. Pokey Gear is going to find us that Professor Sada's vitality uh, here first, but we need to uh, also see some more Pokemon come out and. What do we see in the hand? Well, right. there's an Ultra Ball. And it's going to get us one. Andrew has everything he needs. He's going to be able to get the Roaring Moon. He has two energies in the Discard Ball for Professor Sada to attach to the active, attach to the Roaring Moon, and then be able to retreat it to the bench and start getting a knockout from the very first turn. So complete turnaround. There's no Ralts in play. If Andrew's going to be able to pull this off, this is how you do it. Exactly. Professor Sada's Vitality accelerating to those ancient Pokemon. Flutter mains a nice little ancient one in the active right now, but not for long. There we go. That hard retreat, Roaring Moon fully powered up for that Vengeance Fletching here to take this knockout on the opposing Flutter main on Stefan's side. First prize card down, but Stefan just has a lone Manaphy here. Uh, that was really benched to have something on the bench. Now Arvin going to go into the deck here and. Are we going to be able to at least get somewhere for this turn now, Pablo? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this Arvin will definitely allow Stefan to set up, get Body Body Poffin, potentially get T Technical Machine Evolution, evolve those into Kirillis immediately. So he's definitely going to try and make it so that he knows he's so far behind right now. Andrew got yeah. that turn one attack thanks to the Poke Gear that found Professor Sada. So he's going to try and make it to, to so that Andrew has to go through six individual Pokemon and uh, he runs out of time before that happens, which is definitely a game plan, right? But it's going to be really hard. There's nothing stopping Andrew from just attacking every single turn exactly. and getting ahead. Like going as fast-paced as possible. Just under 12 minutes between both of these players in our Swiss round 13. I mean, it was a very long, drawn-out game one, but Stefan took it in an incredibly amazing way on paper. Looking at this matchup, you wouldn't really bet Gardevoir would do very well here against these dark attackers, single prizers. There's yeah. a lot, but Drew Kennett, like you said, was not able to, to get that Gardevoir EX out of there. And uh, well, we're hoping that we can even just conclude a game two if you're Drew Kennett on this side of the field. <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, it came down to that absolute picture-perfect set of Force to fan on the first yeah. turn. Uh, funnily enough, we both players are playing very unique A-specs, and neither Hyper Roman nor Secret Box actually made an appearance <laughs> yeah, in the previous true. game. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, very peculiar, but uh, amazing setup by Stefan, and got to give props that he's uh, being very quick with his actions, uh, yeah. respecting the fact that uh, he knows he's behind, he knows uh, Drew is going to try to finish this game, and I think it's very likely that we end up seeing a tie. Yep, that is a potential here, Pablo, to see, which, you know, we never like seeing ties, but honestly, uh, that game one was so incredible, I wouldn't be too mad at it. Explorer's Guidance here for Drew Kennett to turn through those cards there. You look at the top six, but only two of them go into your hand here. So keeping a couple and continuing this pace of play as far as getting another knockout here on that Manaphy. Of course, that Manaphy did have a little bit of utility in that uh, technical machine evolution, yeah. being able to use it there with the energy attachment. Now it's knocked out, but those Curlia were brought out thanks to that technical machine. And Stefan is going to have some play here as far as these refinements go. Iono is going to be the supporter for a turn, though, from Stefan here. Both players uh, shuffling up their hands. It goes to the bottom. Drew Kennett already down to four prize cards, so only four in the hand now. Stefan at six still. Yeah, now within Andrew's uh, rush to finish this game, he still needs to be careful, right? He still needs to do all the right actions. Yes. He still needs to have enough Roaring Moons powered up. It's not like he's already won just by Stefan's slow start. So yeah. uh, it's going to be important for him to keep up uh, with the knockouts, but not be careless with his decision making or his uh, bench usage. And, and I don't know followed by a knockout on the Roaring Moon, and all of a sudden you wave a Sada, you wave a back of Roaring Moon, or you wave an attachment, and you could start falling behind. So there is still yeah. room for Stefan to uh, make something happen in this game. Yep, I agree. We're getting through these refinements here. We're going to see the discard there for two additional cards to the hand. 
Ralts coming down. That was off of our first refinement that we saw here from Stefan. So getting these Pokemon out, we're going to see the attachment of the Dark Energy already onto this Monkey Dory at this point in time. Two Curlia on the field, another Ralts lined up, ready to go. It's just going to be a pass after that over here to Drew Kennett. Artisan coming down as the stadium in play. And now we're going to see what a difference it makes having this Greninja on board for two reasons. Number one, it's going to give Andrew a lot more draw power, a lot more usability out of the Professor Sadas, but it's also going to give Stefan a much better target to try to buy some time by using Counter Catcher, bringing that up, and potentially attacking with Screamtail, or just making sure that uh, it's difficult to retreat because you cannot Professor Sada onto a Greninja. It is not, in fact, an ancient Pokemon. Yes, it is not ancient. It has so much utility, but it is definitely not ancient. And it's one of your favorites, huh, Pablo? It is one of my, <laughs> <laughs> my big favorites, for sure. Well, we're going to see that Professor Sada's vitality here now. I believe it was retrieved off of that pokey here there for Drew Kennett. It's going to allow Drew to draw into three additional cards for the turn here as well as getting those energy on these Roaring Moons. We have three Roaring Moons all set up, ready to go, besides yep. one lacking just one energy. I don't even think we've seen the energy attachment for, for turn, nope. unless I'm missing it. Yeah, so no, no. this Earthen Vessel going to get us these Dark Energy out of the deck here, and we can accelerate even another one of those. It's exactly what Drew kind of needs to be doing. Now, this is where uh, the mistakes could happen, though. Being a little bit in too much rush to just leave everything powered up, and then all of a sudden you leave yourself exposed for either of these two Pokemon to be brought up into the yeah. active, and then you can retreat. So this is where Andrew needs to be very careful. And having the energy in your hand is great, but also that means if you get IO node, now they're going to be at the bottom, right? Harder yes. to find. So I think that's the one thing where in Andrew's rush could come back to bite him. And I would even love to see him preemptively attached to the Greninja at some point, making sure that the fan doesn't yeah. have the option to just bring it up and stall it out in the active, as yeah. we saw yesterday with a Raichu. Oh, yes, we did see that yesterday. So unfortunate. But yeah, having that pivot option there is so important. We're talking about the rushed gameplay. That's what Drew needs to be doing, going fast. But as you just saw, or I don't careful. know if you saw it there, Pablo. <laughs> yeah, you still need to be careful there. Um, Drew almost played down the pokey stop, but didn't uh, realize Artisan did come into play there. You can only play down one stadium per turn there uh, for each player. So almost flipped the first card off the Pokestop after using <laughs> it. But then was like, whoa, wait, whoa, wait. Yeah. Artisan remains in play. So <laughs> glad that didn't go poorly here for Drew Kennett. But Stefan is going to start this turn off now. Curlia in the active position here. We're going to see another Ralts come down for Stefan as well. Yeah, now we do see the Gardevoir in hand, so there might be uh, the possibility to be aggressive somehow here uh, with that Screamtail, with that Counter Catcher, with that Iono. There's definitely merit to force Stefan to eliminate some of the resources on the board, right? He knows it's going to be really hard to stop Andrew from attacking him, but one way to do so is through disruption combined with that Screamtail. Well, we're going to see the Nest Ball going into the deck here to get a Radiant Greninja of Stefan's own out onto the bench. Where is the Screamtail perhaps prized? Did I miss that? Wouldn't be the first prize cards we, we yeah. missed. <laughs> oh, no, it's in the hand. It's in the hand. Okay, Screamtail okay. Is, is the last card in the hand. So <laughs> Stefan just being very thorough. I was like, oh, wait, did I not see it? But no, it is available in the hand. That's, it's that beautiful artwork that confuses it is. me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It is a bit confusing when you see it. But we are going to see that evolution now from the God of Our EX that was in the hand for Stefan. It's going to join us in the active here now. Yep, and will all those damage counters that Cardivore is going to place onto itself will then be transferred with Monkey Tori with that Adrena Brain ability. I gotta wonder if Stefan's going to change the beat a little bit and instead of going after the Fluttermane, which can get its HP increased, will they go into the Radiant Greninja as there's yeah, no way to true. increase the HP of that. Now, this counter catcher is very crucial, right? And this is where playing that Earthen Vessel and keeping the two energies in hand could prove a little bit rough for Andrew as he doesn't have any energy in the discard pile. And if he gets Iono, the two energies will be in the discard uh, at the bottom of the bottom, deck. And yeah. Andrew only plays seven, so he will definitely not be drawing an energy off of this Iono. Well, look at that. The counter catcher, thanks to Stefan being behind in prize cards, is going to allow uh, the Radiant Greninja to be up in the active position. Just as you said, Pablo, the Iono going. Uh, all of these cards go into the bottom of the deck here. Drew Kennett only being able to draw into three now. 
Yeah, but found this secret, secret box. box. We're going to be able to finally Woo. see the secret box in action. <laughs> that very unique A spec. Usually you used to see their Prime Catcher yeah. or the Awakening Drum in the Ancient Box decks. But now Andrew bringing that secret box that He's is going to be out. so <laughs> pivotal at this point in time. Exactly. It's super pivotal there. And uh, last time it was just discarded off that Explorer's Guidance, yeah. but now it is in the hands off of that Iono there for Drew Kennett. Stefan still making his way through this turn here now. These uh, uh, these Psychic Embrace accelerating these energy onto the Gardevoir EX. Those damage counters being moved over onto Drew Kennett's field on that Flutter Main. The retreat out of that position into the Screamtail now that has a bunch of damage counters thanks to the Psychic Embrace as well to be able to uh, take a knockout, but it's not just on the active, it's on any of these Pokemon on the board for that Screamtail. And that is another factor as to why this little Screamtail is so powerful in Gardevoir. <laughs> There's a secret box, perfect timing, Woo! three cards discarded. <laughs> and I believe you're able to search for an item card, a supporter, it's like a one stadium, of each, right? and a tool card. Yeah. Now that Earthen Vessel will allow Andrew not only to draw cards potentially with Greninja, but also to be able to get that energy to retreat. So fantastic draw. And off the supporter, he chooses boss's orders to take down this Gardevoir EX and get Woo! even closer to winning this game. Yeah, that is something we did not get to see last time for Drew Kennett. Uh, the Gardevoir EX remained either on the board or Stefan took it off of the board yep. with that Turo. But now it is on the board in this board state right now for Drew Kennett. I'm sure very happy at the selection of that A spec here in this ancient box deck because one of each card, that's a pretty nice box to stumble upon, Pablo. Yeah. Boss's orders here. Gardevoir EX coming up into the active position that energy being able to provide the retreat cost for the Radiant Greninja. We're back into the Roaring Moon action. This ancient Pokemon flying into the field here and is going to be able to take a knockout on that Gardevoir EX. Now, Andrew is not completely out of um, a situation where he could still not win this game. There's definitely, uh, if we had infinite time here, Andrew will almost always walk away the winner, but there is a scenario where Stefan's going to Iono once again. He's going to yeah. knock out this Roaring Moon, potentially playing Counter Catcher once again on the Greninja, and he knows there's an energy in Drew's hand that will now go to the bottom of the deck. Mm. Therefore, yeah, Andrew could whiff enough turns with time dwindling down that he ends up not being able to win the game with uh, before the turns are up. Yeah, that's true. Once we hit the end of this timer, we have one minute left between these players before we're at that point. There are three additional turns. So Drew Kennett has just amount, that amount of time if he is stalled with these plays from Stefan to try to get out of it and take this last prize card. But we're going to have to see if he's able to get here. And I think Stefan is going to do everything in his power to stand in the way of Drew Kennett getting there because... Well, Stefan is currently up a match here, so that would uh, be rough to lose and take a tie here right in the last couple of turns. But I'm excited to see the conclusion of this game, Pablo, between these players. Now, I am a little surprised by Stefan's action here. I don't see an Iono in his hand, so this super just makes it less likely that you're going to have an Iono unless he had them at the bottom of the deck, but he could have shuffled with Artisan. So yeah. I don't see an Iono in hand, and that's the one card that he needs. And... It's just one extra card in the deck, right? But every percentage matter, ev matters. Mm -hmm. And there's a Gardevoir EX that he just put back. He just drew it. But yeah, you're right. you don't need a Gardevoir EX right no. now. You already have this powered up, ready to take this down. So what you need is an Iono to want to make Drew lose that energy that Stefan knows he has in his hand. Exactly. But we've used this concealed cards. We've gotten those two draw here for Stefan. That's all we've gotten so far here. Yeah, there's still one refinement left. That's it, right? Oh, that, I mean, Stefan immediately drew the card over. That's one know, small that's uh, rough situation for the sequencing that we just saw. I generally think if you need to shuffle the deck, shuffle it with Artisan and then true, hope you true. get the Iono. And there's the there it is. Artisan. Yeah, and even like didn't use the Artisan to, to, thin, to thin more before yeah, playing that true. Greninja. So, which that, ah. that's two cards that, one card that should have not have been in the deck got put back, one card that could have been out of the deck before yeah, you right. uh, draw with concealed cards. So these small percentages that change, especially when your deck is 12 cards, 10 cards, 
one extra card, that's 10% more. One yeah, card that's less, that's 10% higher that you're going to get what you need. So a lot of these things can happen. And Stefan maybe getting uh, the moment getting to him. He knows he's against the ropes, but we could see him uh, walk away the winner if Andrew whiffs. Exactly, and it's just that tiny bit of sequencing that might be the difference here for Stefan. And I think I saw it on his face, too, just thinking like, oh, why did I do this in yeah. this order? <laughs> but this is the refinement turn. We've seen the coin be placed here. Now the discard, here's these two cards. What are we going to see? No. Earthen Vessel and an Ultra Ball here for Stefan. All right, no Iono, but that Ultra Ball can get us another Kulia for another That's refinement. True. So we're going to we go have again, another chance. Pablo. Yeah, I think we can go again. <laughs> I don't remember any Kulia's being priced this time around. So Stefan gets another chance here. We'll have to see if it ends up playing out. And I mean, maybe Stefan had something else in mind, but I'm having a hard time figuring out exactly if there was something else he could have done. Now that Earthen Vessel, I assume there's no more energies left in the deck. Therefore, because those Nothing, could be other yeah. cards you could thin. So that one, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, no well, energy left. Well, here we have it. The Ultra Ball discarding those two cards for this last Curlia. This is yep. the last chance here to use this refinement. Discard a card, draw into two additional cards that might win Stefan this game if Drew Kennett cannot get through, through these turns. Now, Stefan is definitely turn zero. We've been on the zero, yep. zero, zero uh, clock for a bit now. So, Stefan, this is the refinement that we need Big. to see. Two cards. Iono oh, is at the top. the top. All right, so this okay. means... There's Stefan, a chance. Yeah, there is a chance. Stefan will play that Iono and will bring, bring Andrew down to a single card. Now, exactly. we know the energy will be at the bottom, right? And Andrew will, will be turn one and turn three. So he's going to have two turns to potentially find the energy. However... We do have the Artisan, too. We, we have the Artisan to shuffle, to shuffle it back for sure. But we do have the threat of the Screamtail, right? Yeah, Andrew that's true. only has one Pokemon, so he might have two turns. But if he whiffs this first turn, that Roaring Moon is also going to go down, exactly, leaving yeah. Andrew with no options to take his last, last prize card. Yeah, that is... Uh, This that is, is very intense, Boo. This is I very know. intense. I'm like, I'm literally on the edge of my seat here now, Pablo. <laughs> that is a rough uh, game here. Stefan even taking a moment to look at the entire discard that Drew Kennett has over there on the right side of the field. Gardevoir EX is going to be evolved into as well yep. here for Stefan. And here comes Oof. that Iono that we dug through this deck here uh, for Stefan through this game. Andrew Kennett. One card off that Iono, representing that one prize card left to take, to take at least a tie in this game, and is going to be turn one as well. Yeah, so Stefan, there's no way he can take five prizes, right? No. So, but as per the rules, he won game one. So if this game doesn't conclude, then Stefan will be the winner of the round. So he needs Andrew to win definitely this turn, maybe also the next. Now... If the energy is at the bottom, we want to know if this card is a Professor Sada, maybe a Poke Gear. All relies on this. Drew card. Kennett hasn't even looked at it yet either. Yeah, I don't think he has. <laughs> Just put one Keeping card on everyone the, under on the suspense. Desk. Yes, <laughs> that is going to showcase a lot here. Stefan still thinking uh, through this turn where to put these energy down onto the field or where to psychic embrace these energy onto the field. Yeah, I think he really wants to use the adrenaline ability. Make sure he pressures this flutter main, though I don't think it's really relevant at this yeah. point in time. The game's gonna come down to does Andrew whiff enough turns? Uh, he's gonna place it on the uh, uh, Roaring Moon, that's Roaring fine moon. as well. I think this is completely inconsequential. It's gonna come down to what the heck is this Yes, card? what is this card? Roaring Moon <laughs> gonna go down. Another prize card here for Stefan. This is turn one now for uh, Drew Kennett. Now, Drew saw the card and didn't immediately promote the Roaring Moon. There's an Explorer's oh Guidance, gosh. which this will allow Drew to shuffle the deck with Artisan, get a card out. There's the very key energy, but there's also the possibility now to find superior energy retrieval. Or if there's an Earthen Vessel left, there yeah. could be one of those options. So now that the deck is shuffled, thanks to that Artisan, we're going to see the top six. 
we need to find the energy boot. Yeah, we need to find that energy indeed. Only two cards going to the hand. One of them needs to be the energy that we see here. Thanks to that artisan bringing another Roaring Moon out for Drew Kennett as well. Here is that Explorer's Guidance. Six cards to the hand. Nestle, Palpat, Sada, Pokegear, Superot, and... Walking, walking wake. wake. No energy available now. Jeez. So we're not winning this turn. That's for sure. This is turn However, one. we're going to have another turn. Now that there is another Roaring Moon in play, we can still win this. But now we need Professor Sada and an attachment for turn. So if Stefan yeah. once again plays an Iono, this very key Professor Sada will now be at the bottom of the deck. So the win condition is still available for Andrew but it has now changed and become a lot more difficult. Well, look at this. Super Rod is going to line all of these energy up into the deck now for Drew Kennett as well. The Super Rod was one of those options off the Explorer's Guidance for that turn. Now, Andrew has two cards in hand. One Professor Sada and one Counter Catcher that is completely useless at this point in time. <laughs> yes, so true. Stefan might just come down to, he sees Andrew has two cards, he's just going to put him down to one card. He doesn't have any information other than it is not an energy on what that other card is. Yeah, Stefan top decked uh, the counter catcher into the hand as well here. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. If, if he counter catchers the Greninja, there could be no way for exactly. Andrew to retreat and have the Roaring Moon powered up. This is an ancient box here, but there is an ancient Pokemon, or a non-ancient <laughs> Pokemon on the bench there for Drew Kennett in that Radiant Greninja. Has so much utility as far as discarding those energy, drawing you cards, being able to accelerate later on with that Professor Sada's vitality, but the counter catcher, Stefan, is up in prize cards here, debating uh, counter capturing up that Radiant Greninja now into the active to make it that much more difficult for Drew Kennett to be able to get this last single prize card. And we're in turn two here of time for Stefan. There's only one turn left for Drew Kennett to even play through to try to get this tie. Radiant Greninja in the active position now, thanks to that counter catcher from Stefan. Yeah, that counter catcher is so crucial. I think that's going to seal the deal for Andrew, who's yeah, not going to be able. Iono. There's the Iono taking away the Professor Sada. Now I'm trying to look at the list. I don't think there's a way for Andrew to be able to retreat and attack this turn because Gradient Greninja is good, but it's not ancient worthy good. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes, it is fantastic, but it's not ancient here, Stefan. Using that Iono for both of our players, Drew Kennett back to just a single card hand here. All of the obstacles in the way, just a, just an artisan uh, out in the field at this point, and a top deck, I suppose. Stefan drawing into four cards off the Iono um, himself here yeah. now. Scream Tilt has still been the active position here with all of these energies taking these knockouts, and, and that's it. it. Yep, no possible top deck combination for Drew with the Iono to get this KO, and Stefan, wow. the unlikely winner here, overcoming one of his worst matchups, I want to say. Yeah, I, I totally agree, and you can see how... how